And we're live, finally, with geek to geek number 14, <laughs> and my special guest today is Sissy Jones, who is an incredible voice actress. You've probably heard her in games, even if you don't recognize her name. She's been in a ton. I think 49? <laughs> I, um, I kind of saw you on IMDb, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those are the ones that are on IMDb. IMDb. There's 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 a few that are not out yet. So yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, but you've been the voice in a lot of my favorite games. Like I love Firewatch. I adore Telltale's The Walking Dead. Life is Strange. I mean, I already love you already. Totally unprofessional, <laughs> but <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's what that's what I love most about games is that you get a chance to. I don't know, to do these awesome characters and then meet people that they really spoke to. And it's such a wonderful thing. Uh, going on those lines, I wanted to talk about Firewatch and the character of Delilah, who you want a BAFTA for, which we'll get to later. Yeah. But I love Delilah. I played Firewatch in one sitting and I really connected with Delilah because to me, it kind of symbolized, you know, having friendships through the internet or whatever, like, you might not see the person, but you can develop a really close bond with them. And that really spoke to me. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things I loved about it too, was that it was kind of like a, like a, you know, my childhood version of a pen pal like, or like, you know, you meet yeah. somebody at like summer camp and you really get along and you, you maintain this like pen pal type relationship for a little bit. And, uh, uh, and then, and then you kind of never see them again. And it's kind of this beautiful moment encapsulated in time. And that's, that's what it will always be. It really hit me hard because I was going through a particularly tough time at that point, but that game really helped just settle me down and made me think, and it was just an escape, and it was so beautiful, and I didn't expect the turns it took, and just your portrayal of Delilah, and I don't know who the main voice actor was, but he did a great job. I should have looked that up. It's Rich Summer. He's a remarkable For actor. If he ever uh, sees this, he's gonna be like, "Why didn't she know me?" <laughs> <laughs> no, he he's doing just fine for himself. He was on Mad Men. He's on he's on Glow. Um, he's he's a big on camera guy, and so to be able to work with him was just a dream come true. And of course, you know, working with Sean Vanneman and Jake, who wrote The Walking Dead season one, um, to be reunited with them again was just remarkable. It was really incredible. And let's see, we do have some questions. Uh, Doogie Forever asks, what is our favorite breakfast to have every morning? <laughs> uh, right now I'm on a big scrambled eggs kick. I love scrambled eggs with a little bit of Swiss cheese and a, uh, 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 <laughs> a toasted frozen waffle with almond butter and coffee. I can't actually, like, stand eggs. I can't stand the smell or anything, so I can't <laughs> eat them. And everyone's like, "Why well, you don't like eggs, Alyssa. I'm just like, I can't stand it. I can't. I got to have my protein to start the day. Yeah. It helps me be a strong girl. <laughs> I don't typically eat like breakfast foods or anything. If I eat something, it'll be something just like small. So I don't really have like a breakfast food I eat. Well, there's always time. There's hope oh, for you yet. <laughs> <laughs> now getting back on to the list of questions I had. Okay. You want a BAFTA for Delilah. Like how was that experience? Oof. Because that's such an honor. Uh, I'm still not entirely sure that it actually happened. I'm pretty sure I just got punked somewhere along the way. Um, no, I mean, it was, oh my gosh, completely surreal. You know, um, it's just, it, I never, I never in my wildest dreams thought that this fun little game that I got to work on was going to lead to that. And, and, you know, to be nominated with people like Nolan North and Troy Baker and, um, you know, Naveed Nagaban and, and Emily Rose, it's like, yeah, okay, sure. That's cute. You know? Yeah. And then, uh, I think when they, when they called my name, I, I heard, I don't really remember, but I heard I jumped like 30 feet in the air and I screamed, holy S H I T. And I don't remember giving the speech and I don't remember anything, but God, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a dream to win an award for the work you do, the Ugh. the job you love to do. Like that'd just be the most incredible thing in my opinion. But it really was. You know, I uh, I haven't been a voice actor for that long. I've only been doing this for like five or six years. And uh, before this, I I worked in high tech, and I worked miserable jobs, and I was working 120 hours a week, and I hated everything. And I just decided one day with the support of my husband to make this incredible shift in my life and leave everything that I knew. Um, 
and it was terrifying. And um, to then get to that point to be at the Baptist, just to be there mm -hmm. was like, you know, I, th I think I made the right choice. <laughs> yeah, of course you yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's another question from Doonkey. He asks, do both of you have a special routine? You yeah, I messed that up. Do both of you guys have a special routine you do before you go on camera? No. <laughs> I don't either. I just get nervous and then hope for the best. So see, I, <laughs> That's don't, my I don't do a ton of on camera. Uh, I'm mostly behind the microphone. So, uh, so no. <laughs> That's the opposite for me. I'm usually on camera. I'm not really behind the microphone currently. So... <laughs> Yeah. But no, I don't prep. I just, I don't even script my videos. I just wing it and hope for the best. Same. <laughs> uh, let's see. Are there any other questions that we have? Uh, horribly Awkward is here, I think. What's up, Sean? How are you? <laughs> uh, Robert Payne wants to know what your favorite pizza is. My favorite pizza? Well, this is highly controversial, um, but I'm a Canadian bacon and pineapple girl. Um, it just, it's been the pizza of my childhood with a side of root beer and, uh, it will always be that. And I'm instilling it in my children today. Oh. <laughs> I actually do like Canadian bacon and I actually just tried pineapple on pizza for the first time Friday and it wasn't that bad. It's like, not bad. I don't think it's bad. So everyone out there that's haters is not really that bad. <laughs> so I love it. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I love it. Uh, Dingy also says for Sissy, what did you think about voice acting before you got into it? I didn't know anything about it. Um, I, my dream job was to be a voice on the Simpsons, but I thought you just had to be in Hollywood. I thought you had to like know people. Um, I didn't know there was this whole incredible industry behind the voices that you hear. I mean, everything from cartoons and video games to, uh, you know, a call tree, like when you call your bank and it's like for customer service, press one, like that someone's getting paid to say that or, you know, commercials. I, I had no idea. And so when I fell into this world, um, my mind was blown and it has been continuously blown every day at what a fun, what a fun part of the industry it is and how lucky I am and how grateful I am that I get to do it. Um, you know, and it's funny because especially right now, there's a lot of talk of Hollywood being kind of this horrible place to be. And especially as a woman and, and, and a lot of parts of Hollywood, that is absolutely true. But I have found that voiceover in particular is the most incredible, supportive, phenomenal, um, cohesive group of people I have ever come across. And especially in the entertainment business, um, you know, I've met some of my best friends doing voiceover and if I don't get the job and one of my friends does it is cause for celebration you know it's not that weird competitive um backstabby catty type of thing that you hear about or you see in all the tv shows as as portraying Hollywood it's very much the opposite of that and it's fabulous everyone I've met that's been in the voice acting industry which I don't know a lot of voice actors but everyone's been so nice so I totally see where you're coming from and it's always been my dream to be an actress, and I'm trying to work on that, but I live in a tiny, tiny town, so... Where are you? Uh, Alabama, so... Okay. Very well, far there's, away. there's community theater. <laughs> Not in my town. <laughs> there's nearby community theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to try and look, but, I mean, I would love to be in the industry, because ever since I was a girl, I was always just acting out things and, you know, just... I always loved being on stage. I was super shy as a kid, but if you put me on stage, whether singing or in a play or whatever, like everyone was always surprised because I'd open my mouth and just sing or talk or whatever I needed to do. And then I'd be super quiet when I got off stage. Yeah. And it's just been this, I don't know. I don't really know. Like I'm always been more comfortable in front of a camera. Like I'm this people who see my YouTube videos, like I'm really bubbly and outgoing and stuff but in real life i'm more reserved i don't know what it is about the camera that brings that out in me but hey if you got it you got it and i, I would say to you uh voice acting can be done from anywhere and you can find coaches that are willing to work on a skype type session and you can you can hone your craft and if if it's something that speaks to you i would say speak back that's definitely good advice 
I recently did a geek to geek with K Bess as well, and she basically said the same thing. I love K Bess. K Bess has been one of my idols forever. I mean, she's, she's been so in sweet business for thirty years, and she's the most lovely human being. She's so kind and so gracious, and she's a phenomenal coach as well. BTW, um, she's great. And you also both were in Agents of Mayhem recently. We were. We were. That was super fun. I that that character that I played in that the, the I did like background chatter, but then I did this little like like companion thing that mm -hmm. is like it just talks like this to the whole thing, and it's weird because I never get booked to play those types of characters. Like I always get picked to play like the big badass woman, um, and so it was a real mm -hmm. trip to to play that little fuzzy dude. <laughs> oh, I still need to play that. Like I want to play it so bad and I haven't played it yet, but I've heard all the character voices. Like there are so many amazing voice actors and actresses in agents of mayhem that I'm just, I need to play it. There's some good I, ones. There's some good ones. Game. So I definitely want to play it at some point. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> and I'm broke at the moment. So. <laughs> I get it. I get that. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple more questions. Um, Media Glitch asks, what is your dream project you would love to work on? All the things. All I the things. All the things. Um, I don't know. I mean, video games are so much fun. Uh, and I've gotten to work on some really great projects with some incredible people. And there's a couple coming out that I can't talk about yet that I'm super excited about. But um you know, I really, I really want to sink into animation. Um, I want the next Simpsons. I want to be like one of the lead women who's, you know, just a badass and, and I want to have fun and play around and go to table reads and, uh, you know, have a nice long <laughs> career with contract renegotiations. <laughs> um, I don't know. I want all the things. I, I, that's the thing is I love, I love this business and every little facet of it. So as long as I can work and feed my family, I'm happy. I'm so happy. And speaking of family, I know you're a mother and the voice acting industry, my, just like what I've seen seems like it'd be more supportive than just, you know, going and doing a film or a TV show. Like, is that yeah. true? Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't have to go on set for months at a time on another continent. Uh, I also don't have to be uh, working until two o'clock in the morning or, you know, to get to hair and makeup by 4am. Although I'm doing Darren DePaul's show next Monday, and I've just been told I have to show up for hair and makeup at 630 in the morning. Oh, no. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's great. I mean, I do get to be at home a lot with my kids and, and um, I'm really grateful for that. How many kids do you have, by the way? I have two, and two. Uh, and and I'm not going to talk much more about them because I like to. Keep yeah, I'm, I understand that. Separate. <laughs> I was just going to say you don't look like a mother of two. You look very very young. Well, thank you for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you, life. <laughs> <laughs> and media glitch also asks, who is your biggest inspiration? There are so many. Um... K Bess has been a huge inspiration to me. Charlie Adler is a massive inspiration. Um, Gray Delisle, um, you know, Kari Walgren, Courtney Taylor. There's so many phenomenal people and there's so many phenomenal women that are just crushing this business right now. Um, it's really fun to watch and it's really fun to be a part of. And uh, I mean, there are so many awesome role models. I mean, June Foray, June Foray. Um, Melissa Hutchison, you know, God, there's some really incredible people that are constantly paving the path and, and lighting the way. There's a lot of amazing voice actors and actresses and just actors and actresses in general. Like when people ask me who my favorite is, I'm like, I can't just list one. Like, I, <laughs> I know I have a I huge can't. list. Like it's just crazy how same. inspired I get by the industry. Same, same, same girl. Um, Mia Glitch also asked, do you have any projects that you regret doing? No, I don't. Um, I've been really fortunate in that um, I've had some really difficult scenes to film. I, I had to do an orgy scene for Mafia 3 <laughs> when I was seven months pregnant. Um, so that was tricky. Um, but I don't regret anything. You know, um, 
I'm again, voiceover is just such a different part of the business than, than on camera Hollywood. Um, you know, it's not like I've had to like, I don't know, do anything CD for a role, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so pretty much when I book a job, it's, it's a really good day, but, the, but it's a great question. And Doogie asks, do you watch any of your work when it's done? I'll watch playthroughs. Um, you know, the funny thing is, is like when I do signings for Firewatch, people are like, write down your favorite quote. And I'm like, I don't remember any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll like, I'll watch playthroughs to find like, like my current favorite quote from Firewatch is uh, use abandoned shitters at your own peril. Um, <laughs> But, you know, um, otherwise, like, uh, Walking Dead, we would have, like, playthrough parties with some of the devs and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll watch them in that situation. Or um, I had to build a demo reel, and so I had to find, like, scenes that I'd done and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's it's kind of funny because it takes me out of the moment. You know, if I'm watching my friends do it, I'm like, oh, God, that's so good. Like, watching Melissa as, as Clementine is so good. Oh, yeah. um, but then whenever I see like me pop up, I'm like, Oh, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. And it just pulls me out of it. So I, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to, to ruin the magic. <laughs> I don't think anyone likes to rewatch themselves or hear themselves because uh, people will mention something I said in a YouTube video. I'm like, I'm not going back to watch that. No. Yeah. Like I hate yeah. like just editing my YouTube videos, hearing my voice. I'm just like, Oh God, make a stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't, I have to finish this. I know, yeah. it's a trip, it's a trip. And it's like, I do I do commercials around town and every now and then I'll, uh, I'll hear them on the radio and it's like, oh, hey, hey, guess what? Broccoli's on sale this week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, horribly awkward ask, will you marry him? <laughs> Sorry, Sean, spoken for, but I love ya. <laughs> <laughs> And RPG asks, are you a gamer? I'm a terrible gamer. I am a terrible gamer, and I will tell you why. I learned to play on the old school NES paddles, like the flat ones, you know? But I learned to play, instead of with my thumbs, I learned to play like this. So I could run really yeah. fast and then jump <laughs> without having to stop running fast. And, uh, and then when the new paddles came out, and they were all thumbs, and I was like, I don't understand what is happening. And, uh, and I couldn't figure it out. And then you know life uh so i'm a terrible gamer terrible that's why i rely on you guys for the playthroughs so thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> gaming's not as easy as it seems like i started when i was five and my uncle basically just shoved a controller in my hands and made me figure everything out myself and i was just like ah <laughs> oh, but then i became hooked so i have to thank him for that but he, right like, but it's also a massive time commitment oh yeah especially I mean, like if it's an rpg or something Forget about it. Like when I was in college, the number one reason people were flunking out of college was Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> like not Xbox, not video games, not, you know, what it was Final Fantasy VII. People were flunking out of college. That's crazy. But I get it. Oh, I did too. Like I dropped out of college, not for video games, but I mean... <laughs> It kind of, well, funny story, I dropped out of college and then I got a PS3. Like, I had been out of gaming for years and then I got a PS3 after dropping out of college and started playing L.A. Noir, and I got oh. sucked back in. Just totally sucked back in. Fun fact, Rich Summer, who is Henry in Firewatch, is in L.A. Noir. I know that, but I know they're making a, a old PS4, Xbox One, and Switch version of the game sometime, so I really want to revisit it, so I'll have to look out for him. Nice. <laughs> Dan asks have you ever worked with Anna Brisbane Anna Brisbane uh, I don't know but she sounds familiar here's the here's the tricky part about uh, video games in particular is that more often than not we record in a vacuum so yeah. I will show up for a session and they'll be like hey you're here for four hours or however long and you'll never see anybody else who's recording the game and then the game will come out and you'll be like, oh, hey, look who else is on that IMDb list. Interesting. And then you'll see him at a party and be like, hey, we're both in that game together. And everyone's like, rad. Like, it's just, it's it's not a thing. Um, yeah. But that, I will say, is what made The Walking Dead so different was that uh, we kind of, a bunch of them, a bunch of the actors from The Walking Dead season one already knew each other. And they were having like weekly, like, let's get together and drink beer nights. And I invited myself along one night and... Um, 
the bonds, the friendships that I made from that game, from the experience of recording that game and processing through the emotions that they put us through in that game, they're still some of my best friends. Owen Thomas and Melissa Hutchison and, you know, Gavin Hammond and all these people are like some of my closest friends because it was such an insane experience to go through together. But that's a very long winded answer to your question about Anna Brisbane. Sorry. Hi. (laughs) <laughs> I love long winded answers and like the walking dead game itself was just so emotional and it had so many incredible performances and I can just imagine the bonding that went on with that game. It was bananas. I've ne- I had never experienced it. Well, it was my first job. Um, I've never experienced anything like it beforehand because it was my first job, but I've never seen anything like it since it was truly one in a million. Especially the ending, like if that game, like just, gut-wrenching if you haven't played it we're not going to reveal it but bring it bring your tissues bring your tissues yep uh mad the collector wants me to tell you he says hi hi and then doogie <laughs> asks, do you travel a lot for your job sometimes um i've started to do a lot of cons lately so that's been really fun i got to go to south by southwest uh, I got to go to VO Atlanta. I got to go to PAX. Uh, I'll probably be going to PAX East this year. Uh, I got to go to London. <laughs> London. Um, PAX Australia is uh, is talking with me about going out there for that. So yeah, there's a little bit of travel, um, but it's kind of on my terms, which is nice. That's cool. Like I would love. Con. Con. Uh, oh gosh, I want to go to Comic Con so badly one day. Like. I wanted to go this past year because Outlander, you can see Jamie Fraser behind me, but <laughs> they had like an Outlander panel with a print shop, like, which is really important in season three. I'm like, why well, could not be there? <laughs> I could well, miss some you and ah. I'll tell you what, if you go for those panels, you will be like sleeping overnight in line to go see those panels. It's bananas. Oh, I'd do it. I would do it for Sam Hewen. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot to love there. Hi, Sam. Hi. How you doing? I know, like, I want him to notice me so badly. <laughs> but he'll probably be like, oh, restraining order for this. <laughs> he'll add him to the pile of restraining orders that I'm sure he's already got. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Mia Glitch says, what was the one job that kicked off your career, and how did you land it? The Walking Dead. Walking Dead was my first job uh, as a voice actor. And um, because of that game not only did I meet some of my closest friends but I met Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin who went on to create Firewatch uh, which they did not make me audition for because they had worked with me which is the dream Um, and I got The Walking Dead by auditioning for it so I had just signed with my San Francisco agent and they sent out a huge packet of auditions it was every female in season one or I guess episode one season one including Clementine, including Lily, including Carly. Um, And they had us audition for all of them. And uh, uh, I worked on my Belgian accent for, (laughs) for a while. I followed around a friend of mine, a Belgian friend of mine. I followed him around with a tape recorder and I just made him talk until he was like speaking of restraining orders. Uh, (laughs) But I, I, I I got Katya and um, God, that was a game changer. I mean, it, it's still, besides Firewatch, uh, it's, it's probably the thing I'm most well known for. You were also, uh, you were also Joyce Price in the main Life is Strange game, not before the storm, but, and I loved Joyce in that game. I just loved her. I loved being her and I was devastated when they went non-union for before the storm, but, um, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, um. That was a really beautiful game to be a part of. And I, you know, the guys that don't nod, they're so great. Um, and they, they fought like hell to have uh, female protagonists because um, all the studios, all the publishers wanted male protagonists. And they, they fought and fought for it and got it. And, and they made something really beautiful. I was so oh, happy was. to be a part of that. I loved everything about that game, like the friendships. And I loved the pop culture references, like the, yeah. Twin Peaks references and like sci-fi movies because I'm a huge sci-fi nerd and I just loved like how you could choose different like options and just the time travel mechanic and ugh, everything. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, they did it right. 
they really did it right. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful to be a part of the fan base has, has been amazing. Um, it's funny. I would say, uh, I would say Firewatch, Life is Strange and Walking Dead are the, are the three that have really sung to people or spoke to sung to people, um, spoken to people the most of, of, of my body of work. I'm sure is, they've sung to some people. I mean, some people are musical, so you might not want to hear me singing. I don't know, but, uh, but yeah, uh, they've, They've all been really fascinating. I love narrative style games. I really love oh, me too. the the way that, that the games are taking the option of being narrative about it. I mean, obviously there's always gonna be a place for first person shooters and, and MOPAs and, and all that stuff, but um I love the narrative stuff. It's really fun to sink your teeth into. Let's see. Doogie asks, what's your favorite movie of all time? The usual suspects. Now, I saw that movie, but I already knew what was going to happen, so it kind of spoiled it for me. So Yeah, see, that's not good. No. <laughs> I have probably seen that movie 50 times, and every time I find some other clue that I missed the, the last time I watched it. It's I a good answer, movie. though. Yeah, it's a brilliant movie. Like most people say something like Shawshank Redemption or Citizen Kane or something, but that's a really good Pretty answer. <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved uh, I loved Usual Suspects, and then I loved Office Space. I don't know if you saw Office Space. I haven't. Movies, but... It's on yeah, my like movie. super long to watch list because I'm actually watching one movie a day currently, and my oh, nice. watch list is like over two thousand movies. This is never going to happen. <laughs> it's never going to happen. But I've seen Good so many movies that. just in the past year that I should have seen a long time ago, but just haven't. Do you have a favorite? A favorite movie or just like favorite that i've seen through this year yes all okay well my favorite movie is kind of embarrassing to admit like <laughs> it's where the heart is, is. Oh. no it's, <laughs> it's where the heart is i don't know if you've ever seen it i don't know that i have um it's about this woman named well she's 17 at the time so teenager but she's played by natalie portman her name is Lee nation and she's heavily pregnant and her boyfriend drops her off at walmart and deserts her in a town she has no idea where she's at she gives birth in walmart and the town takes her in as their own yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I know it's not the best movie ever made but it makes me feel better i've seen it 14 times now i actually just watched it three days ago again wow. <laughs> so, okay i'll have to watch so it a lot and i've read the book too and they're both phenomenal like i'm just it's just really heartwarming yeah it says not on blu-ray it's only on dvd which is super cheap on dvd but it's just I want it on Blu-ray so bad. Like, but if you want me to like say like a super fancy movie, I really love Old Boy, which is a, a Korean film. It's really twisted, but it's so good. I love Pan's Labyrinth, oh, God, another so foreign good. film. Yeah, I saw that one. I love mm -hmm. that one. Uh, and then like Terminator Two, stuff like that. I love those kinds of movies. So that's good. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. All right, where the heart is, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> if you watch it, let me know what you think about it, because it, I, I'm sure a lot of people think it's cheesy. Like it has a very low aggregate review score, but to me, it's a five star just because it's very heartwarming. Yeah, it's <laughs> so cute. It's just well, kind of inspiring. It's it is kind of hokey. It's good to remember the uh, the goodness in human nature from time to time. I think we get so surrounded by bullshittery and the terrible things yeah. that are happening. It's good to remember that not everything is falling into And the that's what <laughs> this movie encapsulates. It just encapsulates the kindness of people in general. Like there are some pe mean people, but it shows that most people are good hearted and it shows that you can have dreams and they can come true because she dreams of being a photographer and, you know, she wins an award one day because of it. And it shows that you can do whatever you put your mind to, no matter the circumstances. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's really awesome. inspirational. It's a little hokey and really outdated. Like the Walmart in the movie is so outdated, but <laughs> <laughs> it gets Not to me every ages, time. But... Yeah. It gets no, me every time. That's what matters. Uh, Robert Payne has a question. He asks, would you ever voice a transformer? And let's see. Ah. And what would you think about working with Peter Cole? And it got cut off for some reason. I mean, yes. And yes. Uh, I would love to be a Transformer, and I would love to work with Peter Cullen. I've I've heard he's phenomenal and super fun, and yes. Have you yes. seen the newest Transformers movie, or? 
No. I haven't um, either. No. Two kids. I don't get out much. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, we watch a lot of stuff on demand. <laughs> I haven't seen a Transformers movie in forever, but I used to watch the TV, the cartoon show when I was yeah. a kid. So. Yeah, that's where um, Charlie Adler, who I mentioned earlier, was one of the original Transformers. And then I got to work with him as a voiceover coach, and he blew my mind um, and continues to blow my mind. He's so great and so giving and so talented and such a legend. Such a legend. It's really cool. RPG says that he hasn't played The Walking Dead, and would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it. And what character does Sissy voice in it? She is Katya in the first season, and then you've also been in the other seasons as well. I, in the first season, I am Katya, Jolene, and Bree. In the DLC, I am Shell and mm -hmm. D. D. In season two, I am a guard and an intercom voice. And in Michonne, I am Norma, who's the big baddie. And then in a little dream sequence, I'm a woman named Vanessa. I, 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 I did a lot on The Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. And no voice like sounds the same to me personally. So super talented. And it's a good oh, game. Thanks. In my opinion, it's a good game. Especially Telltale. I, I loved it. I really loved working with them. Um I, I love working with them on all the things. They've been they've been great. Uh let's see. Awkward. <laughs> I'm awkward all the time. Mia Glitch asks, what's your Hollywood crush? Um The Rock? Which is weird because I'm not like a big buff guy type of gal. I'm not um, either, but but yeah, I, I like him. Uh, I think Laura Prepon is also amazing. But <laughs> when everyone, I usually get this a lot in my uh, Q and A series, and I'm always like, guys, it's Sam Hewen. I've said this a million times. It's not changing. <laughs> I have a scroll of him. Like he's right. <laughs> There. <laughs> well, that's actually kind of new, but every single time I feel like I say Sam Hewitt in a Q&A video, I'm like, he's going to notice one day, or maybe not. <laughs> he's going to be like, this girl's crazy. <laughs> I just started watching Outlander. I'm like oh, four yeah. episodes in. <laughs> oh, gosh. I have to warn you, the season finale of season one is a gut wrench. It's so hard to watch, but I've seen the first season three times all the way through now. Oh, wow. Is it worse Fair. than the Red Wedding? Oh, uh, well, um, emotionally for me it was. It's not as, go well, there is a really gory scene, but okay. um, it, it's very emotionally tough to watch. Okay. I'll, I'll watch it and then I'll finish it up with like, Kimmy Schmidt. <laughs> yeah. And like, there's one scene that's really hard to watch in particular because it's, it's gory, but it's not like, um, I can't think of the word, uh, gratuitous. Is. it's not okay. gratuitous it's like the you know claire's a surgeon she's doing surgery right. basically so okay. that is the goriest part of that episode but the the reason it's so brutal is because of what happens emotionally to one of the characters all so right. just Don't a warning worry. okay <laughs> and the thing is with outlander i've read all the books too so i know what's going to happen and it uh. still gets me like watching the episodes i still cry sometimes and i still you know i'm like what the <laughs> they've also changed some things from the books which i'm really glad about because it's not like i'm watching everything over again right right uh horribly awkward says the correct answer for your favorite movie is jurassic park oh sorry i was way off <laughs> <laughs> i was too on me <laughs> so. I will say I saw the original Jurassic Park. I have a very overactive imagination, which is why I can't watch most horror films. And uh, I saw uh, the original Jurassic Park when I was like 12 or something ridiculous. And I had the worst Velociraptor nightmares for like <laughs> months. I started having nightmares that my friends were getting eaten by the T-Rex and the Velociraptors were around every corner. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> so... I, uh, I, I don't watch a lot of horror. <laughs> oh, I do. I used to, and the funny thing is I used to hate it. Like, I couldn't watch anything, but uh, in recent years, I've started watching it more and more, and it's kind of become something that helps with my anxiety and stuff. Like, it just, I don't know why. Huh. Or it's just, That's cool. I don't know. 
I guess I'm great. more concerned with the tension and suspense going on screen than I am with what's going on inside me at the moment. But yeah, I used to be major. I would get scared over the tiniest things before. And for some reason, I've built up a tolerance. I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> teach me, teach me, Kimosabe. Yeah. I wish I could. <laughs> I just, I think. Well, I started out with like more tame, more like I watched The Messengers. That was like my first horror movie. It's not super okay. scary. Um, it's got Kristen Stewart in it. But, um, like, a lot of the slasher movies I don't think are scary because I just don't find slasher scary. So, like, A Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream, those are really good to start with, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, there's a movie on Netflix called Creep, and some people don't like it, but I think it's really well done. It, star- is, um, it stars Mark Duplass. And oh, it- I love him. Yeah, he's so good in this movie, too. And he's just- they're making a sequel to it as well, but that's a really good horror movie to just kind of dip your toes into. And it's on Netflix, oh. so... It's really easy to get into. It's very short, too, so I highly recommend that one. So those are some suggestions to kind of get into horror if you want to. Great. Well, when I start having nightmares, I'll call you at 4 o'clock okay. in the morning and I'm waking up. I take the blame. You'll have to forgive me. I have to start walking into my kitchen to, to get dinner going so that oh, it's okay. my kids can eat when they get home. Um, but I can still talk. Okay. Uh, RPG wants to know, how did I approach you to do this, or did we know each other beforehand? Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously just tweeted Sissy. I was like, do you want to be on my show? And she's like, yeah. So oh, that's sure. how it worked. I love that's Twitter usually that. how I approach people. I, I'm just like, do you want to be on my show? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not anybody special, but do you want to be on my show? <laughs> no, but but that's that's what I think is the great thing about Twitter is that it makes people accessible. I mean, oh yeah, you know. Because I love doing stuff like this, but like, how would we have connected if we didn't have something like Twitter? You know what I'm saying? I know. So, I think it's awesome. Too. I really don't get approached to do stuff that often, but you know, Twitter helps. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had not been approached very often to do things until, until Firewatch came out, and then it's been, it's been, it's been really good. It's been nice to like get to chat with people and uh, you know, share my stupid stories. <laughs> Like, I love appearing on podcasts and stuff, and I haven't been on too many, but I I just love it every time. I'm just like, you yeah, want me, awkward it's... little me, to be on there? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, what better way, right? It's like to talk with people that have stuff in common. I mean, it's great. That's I don't know. That's One of the best things I think about the internet is that you can actually find your tribe. You know what I mean? Oh, I know. Like, the town I live in fulfilling I've said that a million times in previous videos but I never really knew anyone that was so into movies and games and music and books and all that kind of stuff as I was and then I found YouTube and I've met some of the most incredible people ever I've met some not so incredible people too well but um just I'm friends because I finally found people that I could connect with and you know we have the same interests and they kind of understand how my brain works and all this kind of stuff so it's really and cool. It's like suddenly, suddenly you're not the weirdo. Suddenly you're not alone. Suddenly it's like I, there are more people out there like me, and this is great. Like, what's oh no? I think it's amazing. I do too. And the funny thing is, in high school, I was not. I was actually voted quietest, which kind of <laughs> ironic because how do you get voted quietest if you're not well known? But anyway, and now look at me. I'm making YouTube videos and doing live <laughs> streams and stuff. So I kind of proved them wrong in a way. That's right. <laughs> Take that, high school. Uh-huh. Tell you, <laughs> uh, Robert has a question for me. He says, "If I met Sam Hewen, how loud would I scream? Like, if I met him, I would keep it down because I've met a couple of celebrities, but I mean, on the inside, screaming really loudly. And then right. when I left, I'd probably be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Funny story that, like, on my birthday this year, uh, Kyle McLaughlin, who plays Dale Cooper on Twin Peaks. He wished me happy birthday, and I was doing a Facebook live stream, and I flipped out because I knew he wasn't going to see it or anything. I was just, I was like, oh my gosh, Dale Cooper wished me a happy birthday. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so that'd probably be me after I met Sam Hewitt, if that ever happened, which if he right. comes to a con in the coming year, I'm going to go. I don't care. I'm going somehow. You'd be, all, you'd be like, hey, what's going on? Like, <sighs> take a picture with him and everything. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that made me because I met Ron Glass and I held my cool, and I met a couple of um, actors from Game of Thrones, held my cool. Afterwards, awesome. I freaked out a little bit, but yeah, well. I don't think I would like scream when I met Sam because I'd scare him to death and make right. me think I was even crazier than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Words, but it'd be really loud and I would never shut up about it like never I, I don't shut up about it now but it'd be even worse <laughs> if I actually met him or even if he just like replied to me on Twitter or liked right. a tweet just even liking a tweet I would talk about it for forever like someone needs to start a campaign to get him to notice me <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Alyssa White please so she'll shut up or talk even more it's funny because it's like that's like one of the weirdest things about living in Hollywood is like randomly seeing massive celebrities like buying groceries and trying not to be like, oh my god, you're 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 Nathan Fillion, you know. Have you actually seen him in a grocery store? I saw him at Trader Joe's and I went, ah, and I went I'd freak out. Uh yeah, but uh but yeah, like trying not to freak out about things and then um I, I also get really starstruck, which is really weird. Um so I'm always afraid I'm going to be like, oh my god, I love you, because like I don't, I don't love you. I love the character that you that you play. Yeah. But how do I say that without being like a total weirdo? So yeah, it's really funny. Like I've seen the most random people and, and just been like, hey, because <laughs> I don't want to come across like like a total whack job. <laughs> so I make conventions like when I met Ron Glass and stuff. I was inside going, oh my god, Shepherd Book. But on, I was like, hi, <laughs> hi, Ron. I'm a big fan. So of nice you to meet you, Shepherd. Yeah. And all of this, I was going, ah! <laughs> it's That's so awesome. sad that he's not well, longer with us, but I have a picture with him, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Media Glitch asks, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a titsy pop? 274. Uh, I'll say tree 50. If anyone watches South Park, you'll get that reference. <laughs> And Mia Glitch also asks, is there a moment in your life that you wish you could relive because it was so good? Yeah. And I'm going to leave it at that. Private. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And then Sean is saying, one die, one die, one day you guys are going to bump into Sean Fuller and really freak out. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> he is the first podcast I was ever on, so. Sean, Sean. You good peeps, man. He's an incredible person. It's probably like, great, Alyssa's saying that again. Jeez. Because <laughs> I say it all the time, but it's true. It's true. Uh, Robert Payne says he lives in Connecticut and met Rob Zombie at a tech sale. I don't know. I'm not the, like, I'm not the biggest Rob Zombie fan. I don't know. I, yeah. But that's cool. That's cool. That's fun. Like, I've never met anyone here, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably uh, have, you just don't know it. They're, like, all in disguise. I don't think anyone would come here, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Everyone asked all the questions I had, so I'm kind of, like, awkwardly just trying to think of stuff right now. Um, like, what are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing? Uh, I love spending time with my kids, uh, and my husband, and, uh, we like to take little day trips to places like Santa Barbara's nearby or San Diego. Um, I love to spend time with my friends, which is such a cop-out answer, but it's so true. I have the greatest friends and, uh, and I love to be with them. Um, I like watching television. I like going, well, I don't really go to see movies anymore, <laughs> let's be honest, because children. Um, but I like watching movies at home. Um, I, uh, I don't know. What, I, I like long walks on the beach, drinking pina coladas. Uh, I don't know. I like wherever the day takes me. I, I always do random stuff like karaoke or um, like, I don't know, sake I'd love tasting to do that. things. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm a dork, so anything dorky. I'm really, like, I'm trying to start a D&D &D <laughs> night with some friends, so we're trying to make that happen, which would be super fun. I've By never way, played D&D, &D, so I want to. If you haven't listened to the Adventure Zone yet, 
dear God, stop everything you're doing right now and go listen to the Adventure Zone. It's so good. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I would say driving is not exactly a hobby, but it's something I have to do a lot for work, which leads to listening to great podcasts <laughs> like the Adventure Zone. Uh, RBG says, for your life work, do you actually approach gaming companies for voice acting jobs or do your agents keep you posted about jobs? Uh, more often than not, it's auditions. So the uh, devs will reach out to my agent with a pile of auditions that they need characters for. And then, um, you know, a group of us will audition and hopefully get picked. Uh, every now and then I'll approach a gaming company if there's something coming out that I really want to work on. Like um, there's a game coming out called Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. It's a little uh, indie out of San Francisco. And I actually approached that dev at uh, South by Southwest. And I was like, hey, this looks really cool. I would love to work with you. And he was like, I love Firewatch. I would love to work with you too. And we made it happen. So that was cool. Um, and yeah, every now and then I'll get called in without an audition, but that's rare. Um, Cause most people want, uh, they want you to audition it. So. That's a very long-winded answer, but it's true. I hope one day someone will just notice me and be like, you want to work with me? Yeah. Be like, oh, yeah. Someone does sure. me. Why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, Robert that's, also... That's the rarest part of the business, though, is, is oh, yeah. direct offers. That never happens. Uh, Robert Payne wants to know, how awesome was it for you when someone stopped you and asked for your autograph for the first time? Uh, well... It doesn't happen often because I'm a voice actor and most people don't know what I look like. So um, it's kind of the greatest thing about voice acting is that I can go to the grocery store and not get stuff. Um, sorry if I'm cooking dinner here. It's okay. But uh, it, um, so at PAX this year, Campo Santo did a little um, signing where they, they had me come to their booth for a while and sign autographs. and. The fact that anybody wanted my autograph is still kind of strange to me. Um, and cool. I mean, people people had like these great stories about their experiences with Firewatch and, and what it meant to them. And that, um, that means a tremendous amount to me. Um, that game in particular, I, I really poured my heart and soul into. And to see that other people, that it meant as much to other people as it meant to me, um, really changed a lot of things for me you know what I mean yeah that's really incredible like whenever someone tells me like my YouTube channel helps them I'm like really really but it's yeah it's an honor. yeah it actually it's, has it's someone awesome asked... and it's it's really it's it's nice it's really cool especially it's something that's so near and dear to my heart yeah it actually I had someone asked for my autograph last year like two people actually but I was just like you want my autograph because I was on a convention, and they just came up, and they were like, Alyssa, can I have your autograph? I'm like, you know me, and you want my autograph? And <laughs> I will awesome. always remember you, Tristan. I will always remember you were my first autograph. Aww, but that was so, so cool. cool. Yeah. Like, I was just like, yes, I'll sign your pamphlet. <laughs> like, why would I say no? I know. That's amazing. And then uh, I have to say this. Sean says, Alyssa, you are amazing, and he does have my autograph. Because I've seen him, like, cards and stuff. You do have my autograph. You do. You're special. Not a lot of people have it because well my played, handwriting Sean. is terrible. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, I always do my autographs, and I do a cat as well. So I always draw a cat. It's supposed to symbolize my cat, but it really looks nothing like her. But oh. that's, that's how you know cute. it's an official Alyssa White autograph. If it's got the signature cat, that's my autograph. <laughs> that's me. That's not, a fake per that's not a fake Alyssa. That's awesome. Noted. Must have and cat. no one ever show the cat on social media so people can copy it. If you do, <laughs> I'll find you. I will find you and I will end you. <laughs> and then Skiz like uh, saying, I can work with him. I can swing a sledgehammer, right? I can barely lift a 25 pound child. So I don't think I can swing a sledgehammer. <laughs> I can lift a 25 pound child. <laughs> like I try to lift my cousin's son and it's hard for me. I'm just like, I'm a weakling. <laughs> ah. You need to work on those biceps, girl. I know. I need to see the kid more. So I'd be like, hey, let me pick you up some more. Just like, yeah. <laughs> 
And Robert, oh my gosh, focus on me, webcam. Jeez, work. No. Apparently, Whoa. my webcam wants me. Oh, oh okay, I'm back. Okay. There we <laughs> Robert go. Robert Payne back. wants both of our autographs. Well, if you ever see me, Robert, I will totally give you my autograph. And you, you can send something to my agents, uh, Abrams in uh, in LA, and they'll get it to me, and I can I can sign it and send it back. I gotta do that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was the thing. Webcam, why are you not focusing on me? Jeez, I know. Come apparently on, webcam. my webcam's get my webcam's like, eh, you don't look good. Listen, I do look good. Webcam, shut you it. You do. You do. You listen, <laughs> I, webcam. Seriously, sometimes I see myself in videos, and I'm like, I look so good right now. And other times I'm like, I don't look that great. But like today, I was like, I look good. I was you just do. like, I look good. I can cry. Video that. You earlier do. this week. Thank you. I was editing a video earlier this week, and I was just like, I look so good. Like, <laughs> I know that sounds really narcissistic, but it's just like. Hey, when you was, know it, you know it. Yeah, and as a teenager, I always had people telling me, like, I was ugly and stuff. So, like, when people say that, or if I think that now, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, yay. Because yeah. it takes a toll on you. Like, people don't realize that many times takes a toll on you. And now I'm used to it. Like, if people say it online, I don't really care. Like, I just know they're, you know, typing something out on a keyboard, you know. Well, F but, those people, because that's yes. not cool. And no, it's not. true. So, F them. And I kind of feel sorry for them, because, you know, there's something going on in live or something but yeah that is very much true That's and i'm one of those people true. that i'm like i'd rather someone like aim their hate at me than one of my friends so like if you if you're gonna pick on someone pick on me because i can handle it but like when people pick on my family or friends i'm like no <laughs> i become a mama bear that's when i will end you <laughs> RPG wants to know, are you an animal person and do you have any cause or charity you support or that has importance for you? I do. Uh, I'm a cat. Uh, I have a cat right now who's probably hiding under my bed somewhere because that's what he does. Um, I am a fan of Best Friends LA. I also grew up with dogs, horses and lizards. So I, I love all all manner of animals. Um, I'm a big fan of Best Friends LA, uh, which is a no-kill shelter, and um, I am going to be working with a very large video game company that I don't know if I can announce it yet to do um, uh, charity raising for uh, Children's Hospital, um, and also St. Jude's, which is another children's hospital, uh, and uh, doing some hurricane relief as well. That's incredible. And That's I'm a cat so person much. as well. Oh, good. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hurt in our world right now, and I think every there little is. bit that every one of us can do to help, it's, uh, it goes a long way. Yeah, and I'm really into mental health, which I'm sure people are like, oh, great, she's going on this again. But I think it's so important, like, to yeah. just support because I have several disease, and, and I'm really an advocate for that, and also for lupus because my mom has lupus. And I've seen the mm. toll it's taken on her. And yeah. also for LGBTQIA plus people, because I have friends and family that spectrum. So yeah. those are all really close to me. I know that wasn't the question wasn't directed to me, but I just feel like no. But those out. are all things that are really important. And you know, the the ones I mentioned are just the ones I've I've been working with um, recently. But I, I, everything that you said, I completely agree with. I think they're all necessary. Which again, I is. One of the things I love seeing so much in in gaming is that people are starting to branch into narratives that include more than just straight white folk. You know? Yeah. Um, you, you're starting to see more more themes of mental illness and and how to work within that framework, and you're starting to see um, more storylines that include LGBTQ people or non-white um, folks, and uh, and I think it's so important you know, that, that this becomes a greater part of our discussion and a greater part of our cultural experience because it's it's too easy to just sit back on what what we're used to seeing. And I think that uh, there needs to be more. Me too. And, like, I've had people unfriend me on Facebook and stuff because I talk about that kind of stuff. But, I mean, I'd rather them do that because it's important to talk about it. Yeah. I agree. Uh, some people don't like hearing about it, but I'm just at the point where I'm like, I'm going to talk about it if you don't want to hear it. Well, I mean, but the more we talk about it, the less stigmatized it becomes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 
like the the more it becomes a regular part of our discussion then the the less strange it feels to people who who maybe have experienced it but don't know how to identify it or people that are just uh biased against it because it's not their experience but mm -hmm. you know we're all human we're all we're all yeah. on this rock hurtling around the sun you know at a thousand miles an hour and uh and we're all we've got so why not work together totally totally very beautifully put mm, i wish there was more to say but Broke up a little bit there, so I didn't get to hear you. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, maybe the audience heard you. Uh, and then Robert Payne says he'll send you his Walking Dead game to sign. Awesome. I will sign it and send it back. Just include a self-addressed stamp envelope if you can, because that makes my life a lot easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then I'll get it back to you the next day instead of, like, the next six months. <laughs> and Krillin said he wants a selfie with me. Well, I love taking selfies with people and of myself, so... <laughs> I'll definitely take a selfie with you, Krillin, if we ever meet, so. As is the nature of the selfie. I have a problem. I, like, my Instagram is, like, and then some cat pictures, and then <laughs> some Outlander pictures. That's basically my Instagram. That's not a bad gram. That is not a bad gram. <laughs> so if anyone wants to follow me and you like those things, you should, because I need more followers. <laughs> Tipping myself out. <laughs> I'm always tipping myself out. I'm just like, follow me. That's smart. Social doesn't media usually is a work, big, but it's a big thing now. It is. It really is. And like, I've gotten to the point where I have to like not look at numbers because I'm so OCD about it. And if I see it fall or anything, it just gets to me. So yeah. I have to like block my vision, like especially on YouTube, I have to like cover an eye. <laughs> I know. I know. I've actually lost jobs for not having enough Twitter followers. So it's uh... that's, to me, that's just ridiculous. It's crazy, but it's it's the industry. So, you know. <laughs> horribly awkward says that he follows I'm, i know he follows me i'm sure he follows sissy as well so, he does and i you're the best shine i follow sissy as well on instagram and I follow you oh you do, do? I follow you on instagram i don't know i know i follow I know. you on twitter yeah you do I'm follow so me on twitter with my instagram oh i'm okay. currently i am too because i'm just like i'll install it and then take it off my phone because i'm having like a love-hate relationship with social media at the moment <laughs> yeah tell me about it <laughs> and then robert Payne wants to know what social media do you have i have included sissy's twitter and facebook fan page links in the description box but um she also has instagram which and i should have put that yeah and sissy speaks on twitter and instagram and then sissy jones is my my public Facebook page, I think, but I don't do a whole lot with the Facebook page. So it's mostly just Twitter. I don't either. So. Facebook fan pages. They're just not very fun. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. I like mine I mean, barely Twitter's has any likes. For, like, conversations and stuff. Yeah. I love Twitter too. Cause you can use uh gif or gifs or however you want to say it. Like I am the queen of those. I love using those. <laughs> so when I'm replying to someone or like when I do a status update, I'm just like, I, I want to use a gif gif so bad. I say gif gif. Gif gif. No, it makes sense. To please and or annoy everyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love the gif gifs. RBG says Facebook is for moms and aunts. Well, I'm an aunt and Sissy's a, Sissy's a mom. Which I haven't been on Facebook in a few days besides talking about this, but um, a lot of people are, are on there that aren't moms or aunts, so. <laughs> yeah, well, less, like, fewer and fewer, let's, shall we say. <laughs> yeah, like, Facebook kind of has become a not-so-fun place for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Twitter is where I'm, like, most active at the moment, and then Instagram occasionally, and Snapchat occasionally. But Facebook's the main one that I'm just, like... Mm, about <laughs> yeah i've not done the snapchat but uh but yeah twitter and and every now and then instagram but yeah mostly twitter mostly twitter. i used to be addicted to instagram and then i've kind of just kind of fallen off just because i felt like social media is taking up too much of my time so i kind of got rid of everything off That's my smart. phone and i just go That's on the computer smart. usually but i do have twitter on my phone currently and um yeah. that's really what i've been using lately the most but yeah, social media is a love-hate thing for me. I totally agree. Oh, hi. 
Uh, my little munchkins are getting home from school, so I'm going to have to oh, go. Okay. But, uh, oh, that's fine. It's been nearly so an hour. Me. Well, thank you for coming yeah. on. You are so lovely. And guys, make sure to follow Sissy on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Check out her work in video games. And yeah, it was so much fun to talk to you, Sissy. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you reaching out. And, and thank you for having me be part of this. Thank you for coming on. It means a lot to me. So, uh, do you want to say a special goodbye to the audience, or thank you everybody for for hanging out and for your questions and and uh, if there's anything I didn't get a chance to ask, you can tweet at me at Sissy Speaks and I and I will get back as soon as I can and have a beautiful day. Go be kind to someone. Yes, perfect <laughs> ending. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and asking questions. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.